people may be familiar with the argument, but just, you know, your metaphor is wonderful. And, you know, if you can, if you can sort of briefly describe it, you know, before we launch in, I think people would, would find it fascinating. Sure. The, so the, the metaphor I use in the book and why the subtitle is about what capitalism can use from the, uh, the or can learn from the NFL is, is uh, the following. In, in football, uh, there is a real game. Uh, so in the NFL, teams go out on Sunday afternoon and evening and play a real game for 60 minutes. They have real runs, real passes, score real field goals and field touch uh, uh, and real touchdowns. And if they're in Canada, they have real rouges too. Um, um, and there's a real winner and a real loser. Uh, that's one game. And associated with that game is a a, a game uh, which it involves from Monday to Saturday people imagining what's going to happen on Sunday and on the basis of that, betting on that. So it's gambling on NFL uh, f uh, football. And on the basis of everybody's uh, uh, expectations about what ha happens on Sunday, the bookmakers balance the bets on either side of the game uh, by uh, creating a point spread where the favorite has, has to win by a certain number of points for people betting on, on that side to win their bet and the underdog can either can either uh, uh, win or, or lose by less than say five points and, and uh, if you bet on them uh, you'll win um, and so that's a that's a structure and the interesting thing about that structure is that uh, what the NFL has figured out in, the, in their wisdom and I think it is their wisdom that if you let people who play in the real game also play in the expectations game betting on NFL football bad things will happen to the real game. Uh, that is to say, because they're interested in winning in the expectations game, they will do things in the real game to influence what happens to them in the, ex in the uh, expectations game. For instance, uh, if their team is favored by seven points uh, and they're the quarterback and they're near the end of the game uh, and they would have a chance of either uh, uh, going up by 10 points or leaving it at a three-point lead by maybe not completing a pass, um, uh, they, they would be engaging in the art of point shaving, i.e. winning the game, but uh, uh, winning it by less than the point spread and betting against their, their team. So they didn't want stuff like that to happen. That's football. In, uh, in the world of business, uh, there's a real game. Uh, companies building uh, real factories uh, and producing real goods, uh, selling them to real customers for real money, earning a real profit at the end of the year. Associated with that game is also a, an expectations game where people called investors uh, look at what they're doing in the real game, imagine what's going to happen in the future, and on the basis of that decide how much their stock is worth. And, and on the basis of buyers and sellers, uh, being e uh, evenly on e either side, you get a stock price. The funny thing to me is that in the world of business, instead of saying we have to keep the people in the real game away from the expectations game, we have come to a theory that says we have to make sure, make absolutely certain that the people playing in the real game are extensively, intimately involved in playing in the expectations uh, game. And we imagine in the world of business that nothing of the sort they worry about in football will happen. I.e., even though we provide incentives for managers that are entirely based on what happens in the expectations market, they will ignore the expectations market entirely and just focus on the real market. I don't think that's actually the way the world works.